Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. In his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Fellas and girls, here is fair warning. Act at once to get in on the terrific exclusive offer made to you listeners by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. By sending now, tonight, you can get your official new Challenge of the Yukon secret two-way signal light. But you must hurry. This amazing brand new invention, this two-way flashing signal light, is so terrific that our limited supply is disappearing like hotcakes. We're forced to take this offer off the air this week. So shake a leg. Hurry. Listen, this amazing pocket-sized flashing signal light is two-way. It sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. It's like a special kind of flashlight. With a flick of your finger, it flashes red or it flashes green. Bet you've never seen anything like it. It's terrific for flashing secret signals, codes, warnings, or special messages to your friends. Send tonight. Listen for full details later in today's program. The first cold blast from the north, bringing freezing temperature and hard driving snow, had begun in the Yukon Territory. As two men sat talking at a corner table in the cafe at Indian Fork, about 20 miles inland from Selkirk. Yeah, this is a chance we've been waiting for, Hank. That storm will be perfect for a cover up and getting away. Are you sure the constable isn't in town, Dirk? Positive. He went back up the trail a few miles this afternoon. By the time he gets back, we can be well on our way and the snow will cover our tracks. Are you just as sure about the time that last boat leaves Selkirk? Yeah. The last boat leaves tomorrow night. We got a good fast dog team and it'll be a cinch to make it to Selkirk just in time to get that boat. And once aboard, nobody will be able to prove anything against us. It seems like a perfect setup, all right. When are we going to pull a job? Right now is as good a time as any. All right. We'll go get the dog team all set to travel. Then we'll go on over to the bank. Hey, come on. Dirk and Hank left the cafe and went to get their dog team ready for a fast getaway. Then they walked up the street toward the bank. I hope nothing goes wrong, Dirk. You seem to be a little too sure of yourself to suit me. Well, why shouldn't I be, Hank? I've been laying my plans carefully. What do you mean? I found out just when the mining company payroll is called for at the bank. And that's today. Yeah, I know. But how could you figure that the constable would be away from the town, though? <laughs> yeah, that's easy. You see, I paid an Eskimo to go to the constable this morning and tell him there was trouble up the trail a few miles. And I watched until I saw the constable leave. Say, you did plan things pretty well at that. And here's the bank. Yeah, I want to make sure there aren't too many people inside. At this time of day, there shouldn't be. As far as I can see, there aren't any customers in there at all right now. Yeah, you're right about that. Well, I guess this is it. Come on and stick close to me since you don't have a gun. Meanwhile, the owner of the Indian Fork Bank spoke to his teller. Oh, Frank, is the payroll all made up for the mining company? Yes, sir, there it is in those two sacks. Someone will be along shortly to pick them up, I guess. Well, here comes two men now. Guess they're here after the payroll, all right. Yeah, I guess they... Say, they have their faces covered with handkerchiefs. This is a hold-up. Don't move either of you. I'll reach in and get those sacks. The payroll. Don't let them take that. You can't take those sacks, mister. You ask for it, fella. No. Frank. Grab those sacks, Hank. I got them. Now, let's get out of here and fast. All right. Frank. Frank, are you all right? Are you all right? 
Can't let them get away. Help! Help! The bank's been held up! Help! Help! A short time later, Dirk and Hank were on the trail towards Selkirk with their dog team. They moved along in high spirits in spite of the driving wind and swirling snow. It sure was easy, Hank. And this storm is covering our tracks as fast as we make. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about it, Dirk, is that you slugged that teller. Maybe, well, maybe you killed him. Well, what if I did? You had no business trying to interfere. If he dies, it means you'll be hunted for murder. That's what worries me. I don't like it. The yeah, trouble with you, Hank, is that you're too chicken-hearted. What's more, like I told you, how is anyone going to know where the ones you're hunting for? None of those prospects in Indian Fork is going to try to track us. And the constable isn't there. And once we're on that boat to Selkirk... Well, I have a funny feeling about it anyway. Sometimes things happen that you don't count on. And I'll sure be glad to get aboard that boat. I won't feel safe until then, either. Ah, oh, stop worrying. You act like a scared old woman. Monsieur Oskies! On a branch trail a few miles ahead, Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King... We're heading back to Selkirk after making a trip back into the hills. On, King! On, your husband! As the Mountie reached the point where the branch trail joined the main one, one of the tugs connecting the dog harness to the sled snapped. He called a halt immediately. On, King! On, your husband! On, uh... Well, I guess I can fix that easily enough, eh, King? Getting a piece of rawhide from his sled, Sergeant Preston knelt in the snow and worked on the broken tug. Meantime, Dirk and Hank came along the main trail toward the place where the branch trail joined. Suddenly, Hank spoke. Hey, look, Dirk. Somebody stopped just ahead of the trail. Yeah. I can't make him out, though. He's crouched down over his sled. Must have broken down. What are we going to do? Act natural, that's all. In fact, it might be a good idea for us to travel into Selkirk with a trail mate. If anyone does happen to follow us, he won't go hunting for three men. I'll yell to him. Hey there! Standing up now. I wonder. Hey, Dirk. He's a mounting. Yeah, so he is. This is bad. Now, what are we going to do? Get hold of yourself, Hank. He couldn't have heard about that robbery. He was on the trail ahead of us. Or else he came along that branch trail. Yeah, but a mounting, we can't travel with him. Why not? It's all the better. Act natural now. Don't let on your nervous, understand? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll try. Oh, hold on! I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Oh, glad to meet you, Sergeant. Going to Selkirk? Well, that's right. Hey, that dog. He looks vicious. Easy, King. He won't hurt you. <laughs> well, anyway, I wouldn't like to meet him alone, Sergeant. <laughs> oh, uh, this is my friend, Hank Miller. I'm Dirk Carey. I'm glad to know you. I, I uh, broke a tug on my sled, so I had to stop. Well, uh, perhaps we can go on to Selkirk together. Do you mind? Uh, no, not at all. Well, uh, yeah, but we're in a big hurry. We have to catch the boat that leaves tomorrow night. Well, you'll make it all right. Come for him? Yeah, quite a ways, Sergeant. We had a claim up the Indian River. Traveling since yesterday. I see. Well, let's get going. Yeah, sure. Much, you ask me. Much! On King! On you ask me. For a few miles, the two crooks and the Mountie moved along the trail in the driving storm. Finally, Preston, who was bringing up the rear, called out Dirk! How about stopping for a bit of food and rest? All right, Sergeant. Okay. I suppose you have your own supplies. Well, as a matter of fact, Sergeant, we have it. Huh? If you happen to have enough for the three of us. Well, I guess we can manage with what I have. What's bothering you, fella? You sent something wrong? So do I. I don't know what it is. I do know they haven't been traveling since yesterday, like you said. Not having any supplies, that's the truth of that. Well, keep our eyes and ears open, King. Well, what have you got, Sergeant? Some hard tack and dried meat. That'll ease our hunger a bit anyway. Yeah, it sounds good to me. Yeah, it sure does. There it is. Help yourself. Uh, thanks. That's still a nice of you, Sergeant. You must have really been in a hurry to come away without supplies. Oh, we, uh, we didn't think we'd need them for just one night on the trail. One night? Oh, uh, what Hank means is we expected to go through Indian Fork on the way, but we decided later not to lose the time by going that way. I see. Excuse me a minute. I'll go give my dog some food and bring some for yours. Be right back. Dirk, I, I don't like this. He acts sort of suspicious. Oh, you fool, no wonder. 
I tell him we've been on the trail since yesterday. Then you make a break about expecting to be on the trail only one night. I wasn't thinking. Well, you better start thinking. Hey, that dog, he's snooping at our sled. Get away from there, you. Get away. He pulled the blanket off. Go put it back quick before he sees us. Yeah, that dude mutt. I guess King was curious, sir. Too darn curious, if you ask me. Guess he thought you had food in those sacks I saw on your sled. I told you we didn't have any food with us. I know. I believe you. I'm not trying to quarrel, Sergeant. It's just that I don't like dogs bothering our sled, that's all. Can't blame you for that. Guess we'd better get started. What are you saying? Sure. We're ready if you are. Be with you in a minute. What did he say, Derek? He saw those sacks on our sled, and he's getting curious. I've got to do something. Like what, for instance? Now we can't move against him with that dog around. Not with guns, I mean. What? Yeah, he's looking at us. We better get going. I'll talk to you as we go along. Push you, Huskies! Push him! Now, tell me what you plan to do, Dirk. Well, this trail runs along a narrow ledge some distance ahead. On the right of the ledge, there's a deep ravine. Yeah? What about it? And by the time we get there, it'll be dark. When you have a chance, you slip under the blanket on the sled. Then stop at that ledge and holler that you slipped into the ravine. But, Dirk, he Now, wait a minute. I'm not through yet. Then Preston will come running up, see? Now, get him to the edge and start pointing to where I think you went. And when he's bending over looking, I'll pretend I'm slipping. Bump into him and knock him into the ravine. Then I'll yell, I'm going for help, and we'll leave. But that dog is like... That dog won't know any more than Preston that it wasn't an accident. He wouldn't attack me unless Preston told him to. And anyway, I'll have my gun handy by then. <laughs> that Mountie will freeze to death. We'll be safe on the boat. We'll continue our story in just a moment. You'll have to hurry, hurry, hurry. Yes, sir. Speed's the thing if you're going to have your own new official Challenge of the Yukon secret two-way flashing signal light. Our wonderful offer, the terrific offer made by Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice, is all but over. So act now. Hurry and you can still get your amazing signal light that flashes red and green. It's like a special kind of flashlight. It's new, it's different. Now it flashes red... Now it flashes green. Think of it. With a simple flick of your finger, it sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. It's out of this world for signaling, for sending or receiving secret codes and messages between you and your friends. It works much like blinker signal guns used by the Army and Navy. Yes, listen. This is a secret two-way signal light. It has a special plastic directional signal barrel. That means you cannot see the red or green rays except from directly in front. That's to prevent others from detecting your secret signal flashes, except the person at whom they're aimed. Man, oh man, talk about fun. Say, you can make up your own special codes and messages to signal friends. For instance, one red flash and one green flash might mean, I need help, come at once. Or two green flashes and one red flash might mean, there's a special meeting at our secret club at the hideout. And listen, this specially designed two-way signal light is pocket size. It's less than four inches long. You carry it hidden snugly in your pocket anywhere without anyone being the wiser. It's keen looking, too. Your mystifying new official Challenge of the Yukon signal light is shiny black. And it has Sergeant Preston's name in his own handwriting across the side. What's more, this special flashing signal light comes complete with standard replaceable electric bulb and battery. Send for yours while there's still time. Send now for your secret signal light. It's amazing, it's mystifying. It sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. All you do is send 25 cents in coin. That's all, just 25 cents and one box top from a package of delicious Quaker Puff wheat or Quaker Puff rice. Print your name and address and send it once to Flashlight... Chicago 50, Illinois. This official two-way signal light is not on sale in stores anywhere. To get yours, remember, send only 25 cents and one box top from Quaker Puff Wheat or Quaker Puff Rice. The tasting breakfast cereals shot from guns. Don't delay. Address your letter today to Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. Write down that address. Now, it's Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois.
Now to continue our story. Unknown to Sergeant Preston, the two men with whom he was traveling as trail mates to Selkirk realized that he was becoming suspicious of them, and they planned a way to get rid of the Mountie. Darkness fell, and combined with the swirling snow, hid the sled in front of him as Sergeant Preston followed along behind Dirk and Hank. As they moved along a ledge on the trail, of which Dirk had spoken to Hank, Preston was suddenly startled by yells from Dirk up front. Sergeant Preston! Working! Oh, you husky! Hold on! Dirk, what's happened? Hey, we, we gotta do something. He slipped and went over the edge into the ravine. I have some rope on my sled if we can locate him. Wait, come on over here. I'll show you where he slipped over. All right. He, he fell over right about here. Hank! Hank! Hey, don't answer. He must have been hurt. We, we gotta do something. Hey, look down there. Seems to be something. It's too dark to see anything down there. What do you mean? There. See? If you lean over a little, you, you can make it out. Like as if he was caught on something. I don't see anything there. Hank! Hank! How can we ever... Okay, I'll slip Look out of here. Open the pulley! Preston! Preston! I'm all right. I'll need a rope to get on. I'll, I'll get help for you and Hank. Mush you, Husky! Mush! It took Sergeant Preston a few minutes after Dirk left before he began to put two and two together. Even then, Dirk had put on a good act in pretending to slip and grabbing at Preston in such a way as to shove him over the edge. Strange. If Hank fell over in the same place, I'd be able to find him, but he's not down here. I wonder, the way those two acted, why should Dirk have to go for help when he knew there was rope on my sled? For a moment, Sergeant Preston flushed with chagrin as he realized he had let himself be taken in by Dick and Hank. He thought of the two sacks he saw on their sled and of the suspicious way they had acted. His next impulse was to order King to follow them, and then, feeling certain they had guns and might be ready for any attack, he decided on another course of action. King, go back, fella. Go back and get help. Get Constable Murray. Go get Constable Murray. Meantime, after Dirk and Hank had left Indian Fork, Constable Murray had returned to town and heard about the robbery. He immediately set out on the trail for Selkirk. By the time darkness had fallen, he had traveled several miles. Ho, oh, ho, you husky, ho! Oh. Sounds like a dog coming down the trail. King! Well, Sergeant Preston must be coming this way. Well, that's strange. He seems to be alone, trying to get me to follow him. Is that it, fellow? You want me to follow you? All right, King, take me to Sergeant Preston. Take me to Preston, fella. Mush, you husky! Mush! About an hour later, the constable arrived at the place where Dirk shoved Sergeant Preston into the ravine. Oh, oh, you husky, oh! There's Preston's dog team. Sergeant Preston! Sergeant Preston! I'm out here in the Holy smoke. Go on my sled, Murray. Hurry and get me out of here. Have you up in a few minutes? Working fast, the constable got the rope from Preston's sled, and tossing one end of it over the ledge, he tied the other to Preston's dog team. Then, putting his strength to the rope along with theirs, he soon managed to pull Sergeant Preston up out of the ravine. Preston was once more safe beside his dog sled. Thanks a lot, Murray. I don't know how oh, you got here so I, quickly. I was coming along the trail when King found me. I'm trailing a couple of bank robbers who came this way. Oh, fine. Why, right, what's the matter? Murray, I've got to admit that I'm feeling rather foolish right now. What do you mean? I met two men on the trail, came along the branch trail, and we became trail mates for the trip to Selkirk. I thought they acted rather suspicious, and I saw two sacks on their sled, too. But still, I gave them the benefit of the doubt to such an extent they tricked me. Tricked you? I'll tell you about it as we go. We haven't any time to lose. They're heading for Selkirk to take that last boat. Let's get going. Find them, King. After them, fella. On King! On! Hush! Hush! Sergeant Preston and the constable pushed on towards Selkirk in their race against time. They knew they had only a slim chance of reaching there in time to catch the boat. They also realized the two crooks, having had better than an hour's start, would likely get aboard and escape them. Sergeant Preston told the constable what had happened as they rested on the trail. 
That's the story, Mary. Now you know what I mean when I said I'd been tricked. Frankly, I'm a bit embarrassed about it. Well, I'll be frank with you too, Sergeant. You see, I fell for one of their tricks too. You did? Yes. An Eskimo came to my office this morning and told me there was trouble up the trail a few miles. Instead of making him go along with me, I let him leave. Then I went to investigate. And, of course, found nothing wrong. I see. Those cooks are clever. That's right. I became suspicious and hurried back to Indian Fork. From there, I found out about the bank robbery. The mining company payroll was taken, and what's more, they struck down the teller with the butt of a gun. Huh? Huh? Well, we have to reach that boat. We better get going. Yep. And hang! On! <laughs> Dirk and Hank had had such a good start that it was just a short time before the boat was to depart when they arrived in Selkirk and went aboard. <laughs> well, Hank, a plan worked. And here we are on board just in time. Gosh, Dirk, I sure was afraid that Monty would realize that you shoved him over and yell at that dog to attack you. <laughs> if he had, I'd have plugged the dog with a bullet. I was ready for that. But the Monty didn't realize it. <laughs> He's back there in that ravine right now, waiting for me to get help. He's our captain. I, uh... I was thinking, Dirk. What? Well, that Mountie can't be as dumb as you think he is. But this time he knows I didn't fall into that ravine. Then he'd get wise to what happened. All right, what if he does? He couldn't get out unless that dog threw him a rope. <laughs> and that's something we don't have to worry about. By the time someone does come along there, he'll either be frozen to death or else we'll be miles away down the river on the last boat till spring. Well, maybe you're right, but I, I still can't help feeling nervous. Oh, calm down. Hit one of the bunks and relax. In a few minutes, the boat will pull out. And then we can forget the whole thing. Meantime, Sergeant Preston and Constable Murray had pressed on at a fast pace until finally they reached the outskirts of Selkirk. We're entering Selkirk, Murray. We'll head right for the dock. I hope we're in time, Sergeant. That boat should pull out before we get there. They'll get away to the stakes. I know. On, King. On, your husband. We'll soon be at the dock. That whistle. We must be leaving. We've got to get aboard. On, you husband. In their cabin aboard the boat, Dirk and Hank relaxed on their bunks, waiting for the time of departure. They, too, heard the warning whistle, and even Dirk sounded relieved as he spoke. There's a warning whistle, Hank. We'll be shoving off any time now. Can't be any too soon to suit me, Dirk. Yeah, I'm going to look out the window and watch him cast off. Yes, this is it, all right. Yep, they're pulling up the gang plank right now. <laughs> now I can light up. Take it easy. We're sure now that nobody's followed us. There's the boat. They're pulling in the gangplank, sir. Wait! Wait! Don't let that boat leave! Hawking! Oh, 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 oh. Just made it in time, Sergeant. They're putting down the gangplank for you. Good. Watch our dog teams. Come on, King. Let's get aboard, Murray. In their cabin, the two crooks also heard the shouts and confusion outside as Sergeant Preston and the constable approached the boat and yelled to be taken aboard. Hey, looks all the racket outside there, Dirk. Yeah, darn if I know. Did you hear that? Yeah. I'd better take another look and see what's doing. What's it all about? Holy catfish. What is it? What's the matter? It's Preston and his dog with another Monty. They're coming up the gangplank. Hey, we, we gotta do something. Yeah, yeah, I know. Now, wait. Get on the side of the door, so we'll be behind it when it opens. And have your gun ready. Then we'll both let them have it as they come in. Come on. One king. Let's get aboard, Murray. Well, you almost missed the boat, Sergeant. You can say that again, Captain. I almost missed the boat in more ways than one. We're looking for two men who came aboard. Find them, King. You mean that dog can find their cabin without you knowing which one they're in? Come and see for yourself, Captain. Let's go, Murray, and have your gun ready. King is quieted down, Sergeant. Yes, he knows we're getting close. Look, he's at that cabin door up ahead. Come on. This is it. I'll shove the door open quickly. Watch it now. Here goes. Well, the cabin's empty. Yes, yeah, so it is. 
I can't understand why they're not in there. King Led is here, and he's usually right. As the two Mounties and the captain stood staring into the seemingly empty cabin, the great dog King, standing beside his master, suddenly caught a strong sniff from inside the cabin. Instantly, the intelligent dog knew the men who sent he had followed were in that cabin. With his hair bristling and with a deep-throated growl, King sprang forward through the door. That dog, look out! Let go of my arm! Help! They're behind the door. Come on! They won't get me! That's what you think! No! My leg! Help me! Take that dog away! Down, King! Down for now! We should have shot both of you when we were on the trail together. If you'd tried, that would have settled things quicker. You haven't anything on us. Search the cabin, Murray, for the two sacks I saw on their sled. All right. Jerk planned the whole thing. Shut up, you! Here. Found the two sacks under the bunch. Huh? These are the sacks they took from the bank at Indian Fork, all right. It's all the proof we need. And if we hadn't met you and that dog of yours on the trail, we'd have got away with it. You still might have got away with it if you hadn't pulled that trick on me. What do you mean? I was suspicious because I knew you lied about how far you'd traveled. But there was nothing I could actually pin on you, and you could have taken the boat and been away before Constable Murray arrived in Selkirk. You're a fool, Nurse. Why? When you left me in that ravine, knowing I had a rope on my sled... I was sure you were afraid of the law. Well, the law has you now. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. Well, I'm All sure right. glad you got here in time, Turn Sergeant. Up. We're All glad, right. too, King and I. Oh, yeah. It's a relief to be able to say this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. This is important, fellas and girls. We want to make this very clear. This is the last week we can tell you how to send for your official challenge of the Yukon flashing signal light. That's your mystifying new pocket-sized signal light that works two ways. It sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. Yes, with a simple flick of your finger, this terrific new flashing signal light flashes red and flashes green. You can't beat it for fun for sending secret signals, codes, and messages to your friends. So act fast. Get yours. All you do is send one box top from Quaker Puff Wheat or Quaker Puff Rice, plus only 25 cents and your name and address. Mail tonight, tomorrow sure, to Flashlight... Chicago 50, Illinois. Here's that address again. Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat... And Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case Bulldog Charm. The Bulldog Charm belonged to Lucky Jolliffe. It was found under conditions that made Lucky a suspect in the murder of old Alex Camel. Our search for the accused man led us into plenty of action and danger. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.